Hello there guys and gals, The Welsh Hunter here, back with chapter 5 out of 5 for the fantastic Life is Strange True Colours. So this is where we finally see what's happened to Alex. Is she dead? Is she alive? I mean, to be fair, you pretty assume she's alive since, you know, there is a chapter 5. But a lot of this is going to be in our own heads, so as you'll be able to see. So, this one is very uh, heavily dialogue influenced, as we, of course, unravel everything that's going on and uh, kicking off and everything. And we begin with Dr. Lin. Um, again, you can choose any options here. The meaning of home for me, because Haven, apart from when Gabe died and everyone was losing their minds and everyone's been a general jerk-off, eh, it was pretty cute. Cool. Better home than here, Dr. Lin Hole. Let's talk about how it feels to know that you might have been wrong. I suppose I'm proud of you for trying. You helped some people. Chased a mystery. Got to kiss a pretty girl. But Alex, you're right back where you started. You're wrong. I don't belong in here. If that were true, Alex, you'd know you were talking to an empty chair. Oh my god, the chair is empty! Which means we are truly losing our mind. Now, to progress through this bit, basically all we need to do is interact with the folder on the desk. I end up just having a little look at the family photos, because I was intrigued to see who they were, and as it turns out, it's our family. So, you already know that something is quite not right, as it were. You know, having your dad and your mother and... What are you, Dr. Lin? And what we'll do then is just interact with the tuning peg. Now, of course, there are quite a few things to do in this room. Uh, so you can interact with the tuning peg. Kind of looks more like a... Hmm. I don't actually know. Well, I suppose it looks like a tuning peg. Well, <laughs> very well done there, developers, for creating a tuning peg. That looks like a tuning peg. Um, but yes, yeah, so what we need to do then to progress, like I said, is we're going to interact with the folder on the desk. So just press Y to look at it first. And we are going to get this number, 53322. This should be the exact same for absolutely everyone. And what that basically is, is like a pin number for us. So we're going to head over to our guitar case now. Again, press the Y button. A few riddles are going to happen. But we are eventually going to get to the point where we can input that number that we just seen on our case file. Case file, by the way, one of the best true crime podcasts out there. <laughs> just getting it out there. Casey and the team are legends. So, yeah. If you like true crime, case file, awesome. Australian as hell, sexiest accent ever. Yeah, just just look at it. Anyway, back to the game. I'm not sponsoring case file or anything. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> um, but eventually, here we go. We are going to get the... Ah, here we go. So, just remember the number then is... When we can get with it. Come on, Al. Be be a bit quicker in being shocked and stuff. Obviously, press the A button to open it, and then remember it is five three three two two so five three three two two. That'll open that up, and then we can progress. Actually, what we need to do first is press A to fix the guitar, and then press A to play it, and that is what will actually progress. So, sorry about that, but close enough, Red.
Alex. Gabe? <gasps> oh. You're dead. So? Lots of people are dead, Alex. Most people. Where are we? I want to say... a hospital? Dr. Mendez to intensive care. Dr. Mendez to intensive care. Yep, definitely a hospital. <laughs> Gabe. Okay, here's what I do know. You are 10, I am 14. Our mother is sick, so is our father. But it's a different kind of sickness. Play your part. Gabe, why? I didn't do anything. Stop. Both of you. Dad. Behave. <sighs> Alex, go check on your mother. Okay. So it's our turn to check on Dear Mummy, who is basically on the way out. But this is where we get our first collectible. So if we take a look, just on the right hand side here, you can see Moam's keys. Uh, so interact with Moam's keys on the uh, cabinet there, or on the tabletop, whatever that is. And that is going to be the first out of five, as usual, collectibles. And then what we're going to be doing then is basically just... Opening the curtain, interacting with Mr. Chen, we're going to just have to do this a bit, get some water. It's all very, very simple. Like I said, there's quite a little bit of gameplay, um, but there's a lot more dialogue than gameplay in this chapter. So, go ahead, open up the curtain, and we are going to go and speak to Mummy, dearest. Why you die, Mummy? Hi, Mom. <coughs> Mom. Mom. Such a brave girl. How do you ever get so brave? Is that how it went? You don't think you missed anything? Ow! Gabe, why? I didn't do anything. Stop. 
<laughs> Both of you. Dad. Behave. <sighs> Alex, go check on your mother. Okay. So, welcome back to the room. Of course, does anyone know what's going on? Pretty much not. Um, but we can't interact with the water yet. Um, we've got to go back to the curtain, open it up, speak to Mommy Dearest, and then we can grab the water and give it to her. And watch the emotion unfold. Because god damn it hits you right in the feels. And if it doesn't, then you are a robot and you need to be destroyed. Hi, Mom. <coughs> Mom. Mom. <coughs> Water, Alex. Get her some water. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I know this is a really emotional moment and everything, but wouldn't it have been hilarious if there was a willy straw right there? Everyone loves willy straws. Except homophobes, pretty much. You almost never cried. Even when you were very small. Did you know that? That's been my biggest challenge with you. How do you take care of someone who is already so strong. promise your brother your father they are going to need you you have to be strong will you do that Alex God damn extreme sadness. Hmm. Me no like. Me no like at the sad. Why is there always something so sad? Anyway, we have now entered a room. Another room. This is where the second collectible is going to be. There is a, obviously, again, going to be a, a little bit more dialogue for the moment. But uh, we are picking up a business card from the kitchen.
Was that the last time you talked to her? Mom. I... I think so. Do you miss her? Gabe, what's going on? You're 11, I'm almost 15. Dad and I are time bombs. You keep running back and forth, trying to defuse us both. This is going to suck so bad. Play your part. And of course, what we need to be doing then is playing the record player. Um, so that you haven't got a choice, you have to do this bit as Gabe, and who assumingly is, of course, is your papa, take a little argument break. What a homely, loving relationship we all have, huh? Mm, it's so cozy. Alex? Hey! It's okay, it's just me. But you know that's not how it went down, right? Wow, hello, John Chen. You lost your job again, Mr. Mr. Pure American Asian Man. So, what we need to do then, when we can regain control of Alex, we're going to head to the right and into the cramped kitchen. Go to the right again, and there's going to be a business card that we can interact with again. Left trigger, hold A. That is collectible too. Hey, Gabe. I'm Leslie Halloran. I'm from the Oregon State Child Protective Services. We got a call from someone who said there might have been some kind of fight here last night. Is your dad home? Oh gosh, you know what? We were, yeah, th that was like uh, rehearsal. And I'm in this play at school, and my dad, like he was um, helping me learn my lines. Must be some play, but if you need anything. Right, so to progress, we can now just head to the door. Let's just take a little look at the food. Though, hmm, what we got there? Some, hmm, looks like crap to be honest. I don't think I don't even think the Ethiopians would eat that, would they? Um, <laughs> oh, oops, sorry, <laughs> that was a bit low. But anyway, interact with the door, of course, and another long cutscene is going to happen with Mr. Chen of John. Again, so we're broke. Again, don't talk to me that way. Despite what you may believe, you do not know everything. You think what? I laid myself off? It's okay. We'll figure it out. I could, um... I don't know, Dad. But what are we supposed to do now? We gotta eat? We can sell some records. Or or what about my guitar? We can sell that? Alex, what is it gonna take to get you to stop defending him? If your mother could see you now... I don't want to hear about Mom! Babe! 
I'm so tired of you using her as an excuse to be a piece of shit. <laughs> Don't fucking touch me, piece of shit. Dad. <gasps> Damn it. Alex! I'm okay. It's okay. It was an accident. Alex, I... I, I, I didn't... Dad! Dad, it's okay. Really. I'm not hurt. <laughs> I can't do this. Dad? Someone will come. That woman from CPS. Someone. Dad. I'm sorry. No. Uh, no. And so that is also very sad. So now we're starting to begin why everyone hates everyone in the game. Um, by the way, just a quick note. When an Asian baby, whatever, you know, whatever part of Asia they're from, gets born, at what point do they think, ah, oh, you look like a John? Hmm. Is, is, is that a thing? Is that a popular name in Asian culture? Either way, all I know is the name John sadly is on the decline, but that's just like the same as Stephen and, and Gary. Gary's are all going to be all gone by 2050. Ooh, it's not looking good for the Garys. Hey, can I ask you so, sorry if anyone's watching called Gary. Thank you. <laughs> Which orphanage is this? The one in Grant Park? Kind of thought it'd be nicer. I can't do this, okay? I... <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you need to. No. You need to be honest about what you see. I was. I have. And now I'm done. Almost. But not yet. You are 12. I am 16. I steal a car and end up in juvie. Gabe, come on. Then you're 13. 14, 15, orphanages, group homes, musty rooms in the strange houses of foster parents. By the time you're 17, you, you've seen them all. Somewhere along the line, you start to feel things. Your own emotions don't belong to you. You have nothing, no one. You are alone. I don't want this. Alex. Play your part. Right then, so before sitting on the box or taking a look around or whatever the hell you want to do, we're going to have a look on the bed just to the left of us. There are going to be some guitar strings. So again, left trigger, hold A. And that is going to be collectible number three of five. Why can't I have my guitar? We've been over this, Alex. Your guitar stays in the rec room. You can play it during free time. That's bullshit. I don't need it in the fucking rec room. I need it when I'm stuck in the fucking dorms. Alex, that's enough. 
So now we can go go ahead and just sit on the box to get this next cutscene up. But one question I actually want to know is, they always seem to put orphans and things in a bad light, orphanages and stuff like that. Is that an actual thing? Are orphanages like really, really shittingly bad? Or is that just in video games and TV and stuff? Or is it just in certain parts of the world? I'm, I'm not sure. Is it a thing where orphanages are really, really awful? Well, please let me know because I would be very interested in knowing that. So I can burn the orphanages down. Obviously, with, with the kids not inside, obviously. <laughs> God, I'm not a monster. Jeez, just want to wanna set something on fire. Anyway, what we need to do is press the left trigger here to uh, get things rolling. Press the left trigger. We're basically going to be looking at four people's thoughts. Um, so again, left trigger and A for all four before Alex royally loses her poopenhausen. It says here she is sensitive. What is that? I wonder why she's never found a home before. I'm sure she's a sweet girl, but she's not for us. She's awfully old, isn't she? This is the kid that's been in all those fights, right? I want to help. I, I really do, but there's just something off, broken, wrong with her. <laughs> Sorry. Why? You need to see it. See what? That nobody picked me? Nobody picked you. Nobody picked you. Nobody wanted you. Mom died. Dad left. I bailed. You couldn't keep us together. It was my job to keep us- You were 11 years old. You were 11 years old. You were a kid, Alex. Let it go. People leave. Life gets hard. Sometimes it's a big shit sandwich. Make it better. Be angry at dad. Miss mom. Hell, be angry at me. But don't give up. No one gets to tell you what you're worth. And no one can take your life away. Fight. I'm not sure I... You have a gift. It's something you don't even understand. You can change the world. Make it better. Now get up. What? Get up and fight.
Well, goddamn, goddamn, is that a power that you really want? To be able to scream so loud that uh, glass shattered? I mean, it would be very interesting, wouldn't it? Although extremely scary. So, again, th again, there's not really a lot left in terms of gameplay. Obviously, we're injured, so we're not going to be moving that far. I'm just having a look at the achievements there, sorry. Um... So yeah, there's only five achievements left, and basically four of those are collectible related. So, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your nan. No, wait, that's not the saying. It's <laughs> vaguely similar. Anyway, there's only one path that we can go. We keep walking forward. Mmm, protein, delicious. We'll come back for you, you dead disgustingness. But probably tastes good with a little bit of uh, onion gravy and everything. Uh, but just keep walking forward. Like I said, obviously it's going to come to the point where a lot of cutscenes are going to happen. All we need to do is just keep walking forward. Again, there is only one path to take. And that's the path into my heart. And then my parents. Heh heh heh. Oh, no, 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 come on, no, 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 I can do this, I can do this. Close. Hell divers for life, huh, Jed? Dig so deep, we see where the devil sleeps. Goddamn right. This is it. This is what Typhon tried to bury. A lot of runoff moisture in this soil. Jed, we gotta call it. This dig is fucked. Nothing's fucked. Jed, we got no pumps running. No, my teams have never quit a dig this deep before. We finish the job. Steady goes. Steady. Fuck was... Move! Come on! Clear the tunnel! Who's on radio? Jed! Fuck! Jed! Jed! Oh my god. We gotta move! Now! There's still men back there! They'll drown! Yeah, and so will we if we don't get the fuck out! Make the call, Jed! So then, as it really turns out, Jed is a complete asshole, which is such a shame, man, because his beard and mustache is unbelievable. But as we get to the end here, basically, we're going to find what uh, our dad left with us. Uh, that little pendant thing. Um, so this is another collectible, this counts as a collectible, we unlock the achievement, but it is unmissable, it is story related, so you cannot miss this one at all.
that. Gotta stop, man. Jen! Fuck you, Jen! Come back! It's over, Jen. He's not coming back. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hey, that's awkward. So now we know what really happened to John Chen. It's not looking good for Jedward. Jedward the second, you are Oh, you are buttoonery, you butthole head. Anyway, again, not a lot's gonna happen. We're just gonna uh, basically head back into the bar where obviously everyone gets a little surprised to see you all sort of shot up and beat down and everything. And during my time here, I've come to realize what makes Haven so special. It's a flower shop run by multiple generations, a bar owner who greets every customer by name. It's a spring festival tradition going back a hundred years. History, loyalty, pride. These values which define Haven are the same values that Typhon was built on. And that is why our partnership has been so successful. It's been my privilege to renew Typhon's commitment to Haven. We believe in this community and we're tremendously excited for its future. Thank you, Diane. I think I speak for all of us when I say we're eager to make this official. So, time to vote, folks. And then lunch. Now, just a quick note then, this may play out differently to, uh, depending on what choices you've made throughout the, the entire game. Um, this is very heavily influenced on all everything that you've chosen so far, and this is no exceptions, so you may get some of the members of the council backing you up, you may get none of them, or you may get all of them backing you up. Again, it's the same with Ryan, it's the same with everyone, so depending on if you've gone different, you will get different results and different dialogue. So, interesting enough though. Oh, Jed, you lumberjack, gorgeous old man. Why are you such a douche and try to kill me? Anyway, I just chose the B button here because, you know, sad, innit? I'm sorry. What? Alex, you're hurt. <sighs> Do you need help? We can call an ambulance. Typhon's been lying to all of you. <sighs> and so has Jed Lucan. Alex, what's going on? You know exactly what's going on. I was down in the mine last night. I saw what Typhon's been hiding for 12 years. 
Jed Lucan isn't a hero. That whole story is a lie. Jed caused the accident. And then he abandoned seven of his men. He let them drown to save himself. There were pictures of me and Gabe down there in the dirt. Because one of those miners was my father. Typhon wanted to keep this covered up in case it jeopardized the vote. Everyone at that company is scared to death. All they do is protect themselves. So they decided to bury the evidence and nothing was going to stop that blast. Not even the fact that there were four people up in the mountains. That's how Gabe was killed. Jed knew all along. He covered up the truth about the past, about Gabe. And when I found out, as you can see, he tried to kill me too. Why aren't any of you saying anything? We don't want to embarrass you, Alex. Try me. These accusations are... Well, they're insane. And trying to go into the mine was obviously a very dangerous, very illegal thing to do. But we all sympathize with your situation. You've been through so much. Your brother was your only family, wasn't he? I can only imagine how much you want an explanation for his loss. Something to give you comfort and make your life seem less unfair. You know there's proof of the cover-up. You had Pike arrest me to suppress the evidence. Officer Pike arrested you for stealing items from my purse. Perhaps you were looking for evidence? And I found it. Which is why you and Jed tried to threaten me into silence. Dad? Do you have any idea what Alex is talking about? No. I don't. I've tried to be there for Alex since Gabe died. I thought... I don't know. I hoped I could be something of a father figure to her. All I can guess is, sometimes when we're hurting, the people we lash out at are the ones who are trying to help. You tried to kill me. How can you stand there and say these things? Alex. You're a monster. Please. I know this is hard to accept. You all trust him. I did too, but I'm telling the truth. I believe you. Of course I do. I believe you too. I'm horrified and shocked and still processing everything, but I believe you. Miss Harmon, please remember the terms of your settlement. Screw your settlement. I would never take that money. I would like to speak. This young lady came to Haven as a stranger. But over the last few weeks, she's become one of us. Now, her story certainly seems unlikely, if not impossible. 
but she deserves at least an investigation of her claims. We ought to take her seriously. Ducky, you're being unhelpful. Alex, sweetheart, you know our mind can play tricks on us. None of it is your fault. It's so hard. Huh, well, that's funny coming from someone with half dementia. Hmm. But it's always better in the end. We're all worried about you. Let us help you. Don't worry, Alex. I got this. Oh, for fuck's sake. I have a USB stick full of recordings. Yes, we went through this yesterday. Your superiors closed the case. None of us have time for conspiracies. Yeah. Go on, fish face! You're my favorite person, apart from Steph. Ooh, domestic! I'm not scared of you anymore. And yeah, not of you, not Typhon. All right, that's enough. Deputy Pike, do you have some kind of personal issue with me? Like hell I do. Jason. Well, given that your judgment in this matter is emotionally compromised, you should probably remove oh, yourself from- cut the crap. If you think you could shut me up- Jason, I think you better call it. I would like to speak again. It concerns me that a voting member of this council has openly admitted to a personal bias that- This is a load of bullshit. I don't believe it. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. I'm really sorry. I'm not your lapdog anymore. Deputy Pike, I am not kind of responsible for before. any frustrations you sure. feel in your career. I know the difference between right I'm sorry, and Alex. I'm going first thing tomorrow. Dad. Please. Come clean. We'll figure it out together. It amazes me. The extent to which she has manipulated you. Come on, Dad. Never in a million years. Come on. I hate seeing you do this. My own son. Dad. My own goddamn son! Stop. I know why you tried to kill me. It's not what you tell yourself. That you thought it was best for Haven. This was never about Haven at all, was it? This was about you. I know it's easier not having to think about the men you buried. You want to look away and pretend the people you hurt aren't people. But I won't let you. My father worked for you. His name was John. The world never gave him anything for free. He fought just to stay alive. He fought for us. Maybe he was finally winning. But you killed him. And then Gabe, my big brother. He was building a family here, doing it his own way, figuring it out as he went along. He was so nervous about it. 
and so excited. And he brought me here to be part of that family. But he died. Because of you. And then there's me. For so many years, I just wanted to survive. To get through. They even changed me. I started to think about the future. I want to belong somewhere. I want to know that there's a place and a group of people who wouldn't be the same without me. I was starting to feel that here. And you tried to murder me. You would have ended my life just so you wouldn't have to face the truth. You've forgotten it, haven't you? You've plastered over it with another story. You tell yourself you're a hero. A strong leader. Sometimes that means making hard choices. Decisions that could lead to people dying. Few men could handle that. Haven's lucky to have you. But that's the lie. If you scrape it away, what do we see? Eleven years ago, you led a group of men to their deaths. And then you gave your soul to Typhon. You let them tell you how awful it would be for your wife and son to find out. You let them tell you that Haven was more important than the men who died. When it really mattered who you were and what you stood for, you let Typhon decide for you. I can feel you trying to pull away. Don't. The truth hurts. Sometimes it's so awful you think you're gonna break. But when you come out the other side and you're whole and free and still alive, then you'll finally know how strong you really are. see the truth about you. You hate yourself. You hate what you did in the past. You hate what you've done to keep it secret. And the more you deny that hatred, the worse it grows. I know who you are. I've seen the worst parts of you. And I condemn you.
Well, he may look like a man, but he cries like an absolute wiener. And there we go then. So we're not quite done. We've still got a, a little bit to do. In fact, we've got one more collectible to grab yet. And it is in the apartment that we are in. Again, you're not going to hear any music for the uh, time being because of copyright issues, of course. Oh, because games love a copyright issue. Western Slope Town of Haven Springs, where a council meeting was the scene for shocking revelations. Local bar owner and council president Jed Lucan admitted in a tearful confession to covering up the deaths of seven Typhon employees as their manager 12 years ago. A recent cover-up, which involved a clandestine and unpermitted explosion to thwart inspections, caused the death of Haven local Gabe Chen last month. Mr. Lucan is currently in police custody, awaiting arraignment. We will have plenty more about this developing story, including the resignation of Typhon CEO, the market impact, and what it all means for your drive time commute coming right. Yeah, the silence is worse. I need to get some air. Wow, again, incredibly unfortunate there. But that's Diane and Jed in prison now. So that's good for us. Right then, so Steph Gingrich. What a hell of a name, by the way. Um, she is wanting to go, or is she? Well, we're going to find out. But first thing that we are going to do then is go to the other end of the apartment. Just on the table and chairs right next to the window is the bomber jacket. Interact with that, and that is what is going to get us all of the memory achievements. The Haven Historian, that's for getting all the memory collectibles. And of course, we are going to get the achievement. Was it Emotional Archaeologist or Unemotional Earthing? And that is obviously for collecting all the memory collectibles in Chapter 5. So, that's what you should get as long as you've been following the guides to a T. That is what you should get. Um, again, we've got a Charlotte sculpture. We've got loads of things to look at. Uh, again, if you wanted to. Um, but we are just going to go upstairs until we get interrupted by sex goddess woman. Hey, Steph. Alex, wait. Before you say anything, I have to get this out. Okay. What you did at the council meeting, it was the bravest thing I've ever seen. And it made me want to be brave too. So, here it goes. I want to be with you. I don't give a shit about playing music or seeing the world. I mean, I do, but only if it's with you. And if you'd rather stay here instead, then... <sighs> Fuck it. <laughs> I want to stay here too. You ripped your bus ticket. I can get another one. Or not. It, it doesn't matter. Point is, I'm in. For whatever you want. You've, uh, given me a lot to think about. Well, good. That was the idea. You know where to find me. I am literally in love with Steph, like, I am in love with her. Good luck, Jen. Oh. Thanks, Steph. Alex is hilariously awkward smile, though. Still, love Steph. One of my favourite characters in the whole Life is Strange series. Uh, and the less about... <laughs> the less said about Life is Strange 2, the better, I think. No, that wasn't too bad, of course. But, like I said, now we are basically just coming up to the end now. Ah, oh, thank you for the friend, buddy. Uh, th the ad of the friend, sorry. So, now this is the point where basically we... Gabe is basically going to appear next to us. And he is going to tell us... Uh, again, this will all be... Completely different for you depending on, depending on what choices you have made through the games or and who you've tried to romance or you tried to befriend and who you've tried to have killed etc. So Gabe is going to lay us out the plan of what our future looks like again maybe different for you which I would be very interested to see actually 
so if you do have something that is completely different to mine, let me know because I'm very interested to see them all. Of course, that was before all the shit went down. <laughs> Come on, you're the know-it-all. So tell me. Actually, I do know what you should do. You should stay in Haven. You really think so? Of course. You finally have a home, a job, people who actually like you. Why would you give that up? That's true. Then again, maybe leaving would be better. What? You're young, you suddenly have a little money, friends. And don't you think it's time to give this music thing a real shot? No, you should definitely leave. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Stop it, Gabe. I don't need the mysterious spirit bullshit right now. I just need... I just need my big brother. I'm sorry. I know. But here's something. It's three hours from now. A bus pulls away. You're not on it. And neither is Steph. Life goes on. You get a job working with Steph at the record store. All those years of being a music snob finally pay off. And little by little, time does its thing. The apartment starts to feel less like a museum and more like a home. Thoughts of Jed, of Typhon, even of me begin to fade into the background. The rooftop is your stage. You perform every week to a small but adoring group of fans. 
Maybe while you play, you wonder what could have been. Performing for more people in more cities, sharing your music with the world. Or maybe you never think about that much at all. You don't know exactly when it happens, but one day you look around and find that you have transformed this place just as much as it has transformed you. And the most extraordinary thing of all is just how normal it feels. You don't question it. You don't doubt it. I wonder what might have been. It's your life. The life you fought so hard to have. And for the first time in a long time, you just live. Thank you. Don't mention it. You really think I'll transform Haven? Of course, you already have. With your gift, your music, just by being you. But Alex, that doesn't mean you have to stay. You have the potential to do that anywhere you go. And with that one then, now we are going to face the biggest, uh, not this one, but the biggest <laughs> important choice. We Are we going to stay in Haven? Or are we going to go on an adventure? Either way, Steph is ours. We have gripped our meaty claws into her now. Lovely. Um, now, I choose to stay in Haven. So, again, if you've had roughly the same ending and things that I have, if you wanted to see something different, of course, you can choose to go on an adventure and see where that takes you. The ending cutscene for staying in Haven is a lot more boring than I thought. It's literally just Alex uh, sort of sitting down. And then she gets up, walks away, and then the credits roll. So, wish I'd gone on an adventure now. But you choose what you want. I choose to stay in Haven. But the choice is yours. I know what I want. Kind of only slightly disappointed. I thought we would have seen a, a little bit more with Steph. Maybe we would have had a kid adopted Ethan because Charlotte apparently still wants to kill him or really hates him. But anyway, well, here we go then. That is that, guys and gals. The incredible Life is Strange True Colors. A real fantastic return to form. I mean, Life is Strange 2 wasn't too bad, but this really is just top tier again, very much like the first game. So yeah, I really, really hope you enjoyed the game. Hope you enjoyed the guides as well and the slightly b bit of entertainment as much as I can. <laughs> Commentary throughout. Of course, if any of these videos have helped, don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe and share with a friend as well. Don't forget, of course, to check me out on my socials as well. Twitter, 
uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. And speaking of which, big shout out to everyone who Patreon, who continues to support this show and the channel. And again, with those who who ain't even on Patreon, who continue to show their love and support. Big, big appreciation for everybody. And that is that then, guys and gals. So, Life is Strange is done. I'll probably see you in the next time for the DLC. But for now, it is sayonara. That was meant to be a kiss or something. Now I feel silly. I shall see you in the next one anyway, guys and gals. Ba 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 big love.